morning everybody and thank you to those of you that just joined me in this morning's technique class. Um, if you're taking this ballet program along with me up till Christmas, the 11 workout program, um, fantastic. I'm going to be posting a few little tech tips along the way um, throughout the week to help you practice at home. Starting at the bar in our ballet technique intro class, um, we work on firing up our rotators. These are very important to classical ballet because quite uniquely we work everything in turnout. And in turnout, to facilitate this, we need to use our rotators and our glutes. Um, very importantly, not our knees and rotating from the lower leg. So we start in a first position. Um, we'll be facing the bar with two hands on. And we take an inversion to parallel. Now, parallel is also important to find the good tracking of the knees. The knees are over the toes. But when we find our turnout, imagine your glutes are rotating and squeezing, but it's coming together as if you're holding a 10 pound note between your bottom cheeks, squeeze, and it is the action of the rotators that forces the heels forward and you end up with that beautiful turnout, your natural turnout from your rotation in your hips. Try it a few times, turning into parallel, think of the squeeze, rotate, and bring the heels forward by bringing the glutes together and firing up as if you had two drawing pins here holding them together. It's very good to practice it in fourth as well, because fourth position is a notorious one. We can hurt our knees if it's not done correctly. I'll do it on the open alignment. Same thing, from parallel, squeeze those heels forward, wrap those glutes around, open hips, and establish that open hip position without this knee rocking in. You should be held, lifted, and controlled from the glutes. Let's try it one more time. In parallel, squeeze those glutes together, wrap around, open hips, Good. And this turnout can transfer into every movement we do. Our transfers forward and back, our tendus de long and derriere, and even when we take these lovely lunging positions in this class for our classical swan leg port de bras, even though we're thinking about the upper body, our lower body is keeping correct technique, beautifully turned out, and working those rotators and glutes all the time. Well done, practicing these port de bras, or with lead with the elbows and follow with the hands. And keep your turn out fired up for the rest of the class, and you'll get beautiful shape into those legs and bottoms. Well done everybody, I will see you on Valley Technique class one to seven through the coming weeks. Um, take it with you, enjoy it, I'll see you soon. Hi speakers, Victoria here. I'm so glad so many of you are enjoying the Ballet Technique program and getting into working and feeling like a dancer every day. If you've been working on your intro class, you may be up to Ballet Class 1 now, and as promised, here's a couple of tech tips that might be useful as you're working through. We've done glissades at the bar with single leg. In this workout, we do travelling glissades side to side. The same feeling as a glissade with single leg, but this time we travel, extend both legs, one after the other and close. So after our extension on the side, push off the supporting leg, extend it in a second side and close it to a fifth position. Imagine you're going up and over a little hump bridge, up, up and close, and the arms can mirror the legs to close in for coordination. Try it a few times. Remember to always point those feet at the end, right to the closing and in, take off and land one after the other directly and pull up those knees. Second tip was the preparation for our pirouette, about the amount of force we use to step into this PK turn. From our fifth position, if you're stepping or relevating to the side, to this PK turn, you want to get one plumb line from your center down to your foot. If you're pushing off this supporting leg, if you give too much force, you might overcook it and head towards the direction you're traveling. If you don't give quite enough force, you won't get onto that supporting leg and you will fall back towards it. Just enough force to bring you onto your central alignment, moment of balance, and then you'll be right on it. You're thinking of a plumb line from the top of your head down to the ball of your foot. Try that a few times to get that feeling of suspension and make sure you have just the right amount of force and push off from this leg and foot, and then add your turn and arms. If you're adding your arms, the fingers are lift and sweep, taking that arm up, and if you're adding your turn, bring that leg round, to close. Two little tips to take me for ballet class one and carry on through right up to class seven or eight. Um, have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of the program. Hi sleepers, Victoria here. You may be moving very swiftly through this ballet technique program using two to three days of each workout as suggested, 
but if you're taking a week on each class that is also absolutely fine. So if you are on class two at the moment, um, we have moved on from our travelling glissage that we worked on last week, up and over with the leg, up and over with the leg, to Sison. Sison is a more powerful explosive movement than glissade, but it starts and ends the same. Pushing off two legs from fifth position, we're going to split the legs or scissor action, Sison meaning scissor, to close one directly after the other, but this time with a jump. So if we're adding arms, the same with our glissades, the arm comes into close with the closing leg. We push off two legs, scissor action, out and in. in very quickly from one side to the other. So plie through two legs, split in, in. So plie from two to power, open your split action and leg close one after the other directly. Let's try a little sequence of them. Once you do them up to speed, they really raise that heart rate. Let's go for eight, seven, six, five, and try to bend over that closing leg to use your waist. Well done. <laughs> it really will push your heart rate up and once you're more experienced, these can be taken front and back as well as side to side. They're a beautiful traveling movement, which has the added benefit of burning a lot of calories. <laughs> Enjoy working on this one in Club Valley Class 2 and onwards. I'll see you next week. Hi everybody, Victoria here from Sleep and we are in week two of our ballet technique program if you are following along. You'll probably be around ballet class three at the moment. In class three, we take a step away slightly from our classical soundtrack and see the introduction of a more rigorous beat throughout. I put this class in specifically to help with one thing we hear a lot um, from sleepers and from everybody is that working at pace can be challenging. So implementing technique, when we're working slowly, we have a little bit more brain time to think about what's coming next, how we're employing those muscles and making the correct shapes. When we start to work at pace, this is harder to chase and catch up with. So I wanted to give you a few tips, not necessarily technical, physical tips, but something to do with our brain that helps us work quickly and nail those technical things at pace. In this workout, the combination specifically stays the same as it did in class one and two with the progressions glissade, sisson into pirouette. And what I'd like to do when we're working at this slightly quicker pace is talk through the sequence as you do it. It's a really good trick to also verbalize it, even if not out loud, in your own head to help you solidify the steps and remember what's coming next. We start with a grand battement devant. So as you do it, say to yourself, grand battement front and close, to the back and close, retire, extend, pas de bourre and in, glissade up over, glissade up over, pirouette, step up, and squeeze to start second side. So saying the combination within that rhythm helps you remember what's coming next and keep you moving through the beat. It doesn't matter if you don't know the classical terminology, use references that help you remember the sequence. For example, to the front and close, to the back and close, toe to knee, leg goes out, close behind side front, glissa up, up and over, up and over, turn toe to knee, Close, second side. So speaking it through as you go will help you gradually build up this pace. It fires up your memory and all those brain synapses as well as your muscles working faster. It's a great little tip for learning sequences quicker and nailing them faster. Take that one with you as we work through this slightly more pacey ballet class three. And as we move on to classical ballet class four, the sequence changes up completely and we have some new choreography to contend with. Enjoy this one and I'll see you soon. Hi everybody, Victoria here from Sleek. I wanted to say a big thank you first of all for all your wonderful engagement and feedback about the Ballet Technique program. If you've been following along day to day with me, we will be on Ballet Class 4 by now. If we're taking a little longer, with a week with each class, that is also absolutely fine. In Ballet Class 4, we move on from the pirouettes we have done on des dong, either pique turn on des dong, stepping to the knee and close, or from back to front, pirouette this way and close, to pirouettes en dehors. Pirouettes en dehors, and we're taking them devant in the sequence of ballet class four. We're taking the leg to the front and turning towards the downstage shoulder, joining our arms in first position. So, one key thing, you have to have your weight evenly distributed on two feet as you take your preparation for plie. If you favor your back leg or your front leg, you won't get that nice even press to get a secure, balanced retire passe. 
So once you've squeezed down into two feet, making sure they're flat on the floor in your natural turnout, hips are open, shoulders stacked over hips, make sure you don't tilt forward or back before you take off of your preparation. Arms preparatory, shoulders pressed down. We're gonna join this arm to this arm as we lift the toe to knee and turn towards this shoulder and close the foot derriere. Exactly the same thing on the other side without the turn. Draw the toe to the knee as it comes up, this arm comes into first. We take our full rotation if we're pirouetting and we close the front leg to the back. So when we add the turn, as it's just a single turn, we don't need too much force. But remember that action of drawing a line up the front of the shin and down the back of the calf, finishing in fifth and starting in fifth each time. Let's try together. So squeeze, make sure you have a secure and safe floor to do this on, not too slippy or sticky. Press down with the shoulders, don't take any tension in the neck. And as you draw the toe to the knee, whip this arm into first position and the head goes round to finish and close. Spotting to where you want to finish will help you whip that head round, up, squeeze and close. So a little bit of force with this closing arm, even distribution of the weight and a quick draw toe to knee and slide back down to finish in fifth. This nice direct action will help you stay on that center axis. The slower it comes up, the more chance we have to come off balance. Make it quick, make it snappy, be confident and assured. Enjoy this one, I'll see you on the next one. Hi Sleekers, Victoria here. I can't believe we are over halfway through with the Ballet Technique program if you've been following along with me and we are on Ballet Class 5. Again at Ballet Class 5, we turn back a little bit more towards cardio and we move through the bar at pace without stopping to a slightly more upbeat soundtrack. When we come into the centre, we revert more to our classical music and we take a great continuous centre practice, which is great for our lower body as well as our cardio. It includes glissades. Now, glissades we work at, at the bar and also in the centre, and it's really important to distinguish them from tendu. Tendu extends out along the floor and we work through the ball of the feet to a full extension, through the ball of the feet to close. With glissade we take the same action but we come off the floor and it's really important to get that stop and hold as if I were taking a photograph I would like to see that leg in the air. So it's a different dynamic and the open is just as important as the close as we squeeze and cross those inside thighs and work into our adductors. When we take them quickly to the side we cross derriere devant so switching back front back and as you do this, it's really important when we start to move at pace, you don't release that turnout and it ends up coming out at this angle rather than that rotation. In turnout, we talked about it in our very first tip, engaging those rotators, pinning those glutes together as if you're holding a 10 pound note between your buttocks, then adding the feeling of glissade with that dynamic extension, out, out, out. If you think about drawing the heel of the foot to the toe joint of the opposite foot, and then the small toe joint derriere, you will get that lovely crossing action you need, which starts from the tops of the legs. Cross, cross, cross. We repeat it on the second side. Our tendu moves to glissade, coming off the floor, hold, and find that full extension, like lightning bolts coming out the end of your toes. Get that feeling, and same thing. Cross, cross, cross. Really working those inside legs. So at least on a very dynamic movement, find that frozen moment in time so you get that beautiful extension and the stop and hold is where all the shaping happens. Take that one with you. I'll see you on the next class. And as we come to the end of this ballet technique program, there's a little Christmas special in there for you to dance your heart out with. <laughs> Take care, see you soon. Hi, Victoria here. Um, we are speeding through the ballet technique program and are almost at the end of this cycle at ballet class six, where we work on ballonets. Ballonet is like the sound of the word ballon, with a nice lilting jump to it. You will most often see ballonets preceded with a coupe in the preparation, coupe meaning to cut. And it's that I really wanted to focus on a little bit today, as it's so important where you step with this coupe leg as to the trajectory of your jump. So in this particular sequence, um, we cut the leg behind in coupe and ballonet the leg out and close it to the back. Cut is the coupe out, and close. Of course, with the word ballon in there, we add a jump. So we extend the leg, cut out and in. Out and in, out and in, out and in. And the cutting action has to be directly replacing your supporting leg in order for you to go directly up and not out to one side or the other. I find it much easier to add arms with it. If you're brain, you might want to keep them to your hips for now, but 
But the action of the arms helps with the lift of the jump. If you coordinate the upper and lower body together, you will find it much more effective. So if you start with your arms in second and cut coupe behind, the arms are fully extended with the leg. And in this particular sequence, we're drawing the opposition arm across, so matching the supporting leg. Again, extending the leg out with the arms at your widest point. The arms and legs are open as you come in, arm and leg come to join. Let's try that with our ballon. Cutting derriere on five, six, try a little sequence now. We go out and in, out and in, lift and in, point the underneath foot, cut and replace, cut and replace each time. And you'll find a sequence of those does really raise your heart rate. It's lovely these steps can progress to much more traveling front and back with a chasse preceding it. They can be lovely traveling forward, side to side, front and back. They are a lovely movement to practice, get your heart rate up and shape your lower body. So ballonet, meaning bats, enjoy that one and I'll see you on the next one. Hi everybody, Victoria from Sleek here and if you're joining me on this little video, you're most likely at the end of the Ballet Technique programme we've been following over the last month in the lead up to Christmas. If you've come to the end of this programme with me, congratulations, well done. I hope you feel really assured and more confident with some of your classical technique and classical ballet knowledge now. We've worked through so many different things from glissades, sisson to balancé, pas de beret, adage and even pirouettes. Our last tip for ballet class seven is about adage. And again, returning right back to where we started about turnout, the tip from our intro class. We talked about maintaining turnout um, in this first tip by engaging the glutes, wrapping them round, and thinking about holding a 10 pound note between your buttocks to maintain that turnout as we move through movements on the floor. Maintaining that turnout when our legs are on lair in the air is slightly more challenging, but I wanted to give you a few visuals to help with this. So I'm going to try this on fast to begin with. When moving on lair, we're going to start with the devil page of arm, drawing the toe to the knee. A nice image to think of is where you are leading from. So as you devil page of arm, if you think about leading with the knee, you're going to get a quite rotated inwards effect which we don't want. We don't want to see this outer thigh overdevelop the IT bands and quads. What we want to see is a rotation hip socket and leading out with the heel so to your maximum turnout lead with the toe and heel so it looks like you're serving a cup of tea on the end of it rather than rotating inwards and of course you drop your cup of tea. The same thing derriere but in the complete reverse if you led with the foot derriere you would be rotated inwards. What I want you to get in the feeling demo pay derriere is leading with the knee. So the knee leads out, knee leads out, knee leads out. So you have rotation into that hip socket in the arabesque. In ballet class seven, we also have demo pay a la seconde and a little promenade to face the side. Same thing here. The image I want you to think of is putting the key in a lock and then rotating this hip socket as you pivot and lift out of this heel, rotate, 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 so you get complete turnout, not rotation inwards. The shoulders should be facing the side or the corner, the direction you're traveling, but the hips should also come round with the rotation in the hip socket to keep the leg turned out. It's quite a nice feeling if you can get it. Let's just try it once on each side, going slightly on the quasi alignment, let's try. One double pay de bong. And again, if we led with the knee, it would be turned in. Lead with the heel, lead with the heel, arm and leg in opposition, and close. Same thing derriere, but in the reverse. Rather than leading with the heel, we're gonna lead with the knee, open through classical attitude to arabesque, and close. In a la seconde, we développe, and imagine you're putting the key into a lock. Get that rotation in the hip socket as you pivot, pivot, pivot. You'll see we're still rotating the leg, engaging the glute. And in this particular sequence, we go on to a lovely set of balancé and pas de beret. It's a beautiful sequence in ballet class seven. I hope you enjoy it. And it finishes with a classical pirouette, which we've worked on so hard. I hope they're feeling really good. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a fantastic program to repeat into the new year, an unlimited number of times as it works on all the classical basics and beyond. We also have some great new fitness programs coming your way for January. Keep sleeping with us, have a wonderful Christmas, 
and enjoy your sweet dance bites that are just added to your library. Have a wonderful Christmas, ladies.